You can see it pretty good from here. That's incredible. Do, do you know the people who do it, or? No, I don't think anyone knows, to be honest. But they do it in, the, in at night? Yeah. <laughs> that is pretty incredible. G8 NWL War Criminals. We recently decided to cover the G8 protest in Northern Ireland, and this year the G8 definitely decided on a location that was furthest away from public transportation and very secluded um, away from everybody. They were virtually on an island in a suburb that no one could get to, which meant a lot of the organizers had to organize buses, and we were very lucky enough to get on one of those buses. We made our way towards Enniskillen, and as soon as we got there, there was people from all different causes, all different organizations. But I do have to say fracking was a major issue of concern from the activists that were bussed in. Fracking is a new industry that is starting to take place in Northern Ireland. And a lot of people are fearful of them uh, polluting the drinking water there. They definitely had their voices heard. But what was really interesting about this march is that the police had virtually total control of where the protesters would march. We were five miles away from the G8 summit and the police would only allow the protesters to march two miles uh, out of that five miles towards a wall. We marched for two miles and we were set in front of a wall that was still three miles away from the G8 summit. Flying overhead were helicopters, some people say even drones, a lot of police officers, a huge wall, a huge barricade. There was over 50 million pounds spent on this security operation for the peaceful people who came there. There wasn't any acts of violence that I've seen, and it just shows you the ridiculous amount of money spent on this paranoid security police state apparatus that is watching, documenting, and filming anybody who wants their voice heard. This is just happening right now. We're reporting live to you as it's happening. Protesters here have actually breached the barbed wire fencing, which you see right there in front of me. And as soon as some protesters started coming into the unauthorized zone, police officers out of nowhere, there's about a hundred of them uh, just in the background in full riot gear have come out. So right now there's a little standoff. The police have issued an order saying that this is an unlawful assembly, that the people here will be arrested for breach of the peace if they don't go behind the barbed wire. It doesn't look like the protesters are moving. It looks like a little standoff right now and the police in large numbers behind, uh, in front of us are just waiting to see what will happen. There's a lot of people here from the media. Uh, a lot of the other protesters are still on the other side of the fence. And the protesters are chanting here. So as soon as the protesters were moving in the unauthorized zone, the organizers said, the buses are leaving, everybody needs to go back now. And things pretty much de-escalated from here. So this is Luke We Are Change reporting live to you from the G8. We will have other video reports if anything happens. We will have HD videos on youtube.com forward slash we are change. But the best way to find out picture updates, video updates, and live video streaming updates is just to follow me on twitter.com forward slash Luke we are change. It looks like everybody's heading back, so we will stop the broadcast right now. If anything else happens, we, we will be back up live. But thank you again so much for watching. Thank you again for the support. Frontier, sorry, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, uh, and it's a project to survey how government agencies across the country are interested in and looking to acquire drones, what sorts of policies they're using, and what sort of actual equipment they're planning on deploying. With the story still developing about how the Justice Department was spying on the Associated Press journalists, I wanted to know, is there a way for a journalist to keep his sources secure? Is there a way to keep